where we are expecting a good old-fashioned shootout between Georgia Tech and the dangerous Cavaliers of Virginia. Take a look at the ACC standings. Florida State still number one in the nation, unbeaten in the conference. Georgia Tech hopes the Seminoles stumble so they can get at least a share of the title like they did a year ago. NC State has beaten Maryland, Virginia, hanging right in the middle. Hi, everybody. I'm Tim Brand, along with Dean Blevins. Glad to have you along for what should be a terrific ball game. As a matter of fact, it's big for several reasons. Virginia's trying to run the table, win out, so they can get seven wins for the 13th straight year. Georgia Tech is trying to do the same, so they are BCS eligible to get one of those big bowls. And, of course, for Joe Hamilton Dino, this game is big. He's the Heisman guy. Yeah, so far, and he needs to have a big day today. This guy has impeccable credentials. I mean, he has everything that you would want. Tim, the best thing he brings, though, I think, is that he's a winner. He's won 16 of his last 18 games. And the three years before that, they went 12 and 21 without him. He also has a confident swagger. His team always believes they can win with him. Now, on the other side of the field, Virginia has Thomas Jones. Not getting much Heisman attention, but I want to tell you, folks, He's as good as anybody in the country. Well, in terms of an all-round back, he's the best that I have seen this year. Here's a guy that also has impeccable credentials. You know, he never misses practices, never misses games, never misses class, never misses a meal, doesn't miss anything. But, uh, you know, he'll have a bullseye on today. Even though Georgia Tech has struggled defensively against the run, they'll put a bullseye next to that number six. You know, this should be fun. I want to introduce you to the third member of our broadcast team, Chip Tarkenton, who is with George O'Leary. Thank you, Timmy. Coach, what have you done to get your team ready? You're ranked seventh in the country. You're heading into the end of the season here. What have you done to keep the team on an even keel? Well, I tell you what, we got so many young players, it's easy to keep them on keel. It's just a matter of our older players, you know, keeping their attention, keeping their focus. And this will be a great game today, great environment. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Good luck to you today. Last time Georgia Tech won at Scott Stadium, how about 1990? Timmy, you remember that game. You were here. That was unbelievable. Virginia was ranked number one in the nation. Georgia Tech won the game, went on to win a share of the national championship. Georgia Tech won the toss, and Georgia Tech will receive the opening kickoff. As you look at David Green, the kicker, and deep for Tech will be Des White and Will Glover. There's a look at Des White, and he is dangerous. Georgia Tech comes in, ranked seventh in the country, six and one overall, four and one in the conference. Virginia, four and four, and needs to win out to keep the streak alive. Seven wins or more they've had for 12 straight seasons. They want to make it 13. Green has a strong leg, although this one is short. It's taken by White at the three. Across the 20 to the 23 yard line, and that's where the Yellow Jackets will have it first. Take a look at the Chili's starting lineup offensively. Chris Brown, Jason Burks, Noah King, and Brent Key make up one of the best offensive lines in the country. And when you add John Carmen, who was all ACC transfer from New York, he is outstanding in the line as special. Des White, Kerry Watkins, Conrad Andrzejewski is the tight end and the skilled guys. Joe Hamilton, the Heisman Trophy candidate. Sean Gregory is a sophomore who gets the start along with Ed Wilder. First down play, the option, absolutely nothing there. Joe Hamilton had nowhere to go. He was hit after the fake. Take a look at the defensive lineup for Virginia. Monsanto Pope, Maurice Anderson, who is having just a terrific year from down in Blackstone, Virginia. Johnny Shivers and Staminich make up the front four. The linebacker, Shannon Taylor. 
Then comes Bell, Brent Elizabeth, and Byron Sweet. In the secondary, Stoops, Williams, Evans, and Harris. The pass is complete, and it's a first down for Tech as Sean Gregory takes it out to the 39-yard line. Harris and Stooks are both seniors on the corners, and in the middle of the safeties, Chris Williams has two interceptions, and Evans has a pick. Evans playing with a bone bruise. They didn't know if he'd be ready. It's just above the ankle, but he is playing in the game. With third down, Georgia Tech likes to run option. Now, Virginia has a, an interesting scheme set up to make Joe Hamilton not run the football. Third down and one. He did not have enough for the first. I thought he crossed the chains. He didn't. But straight ahead, they go with Gregory. Almost breaks out of there, but he certainly gets the first down this time. So that was a gain of seven. You know, the scouting report's pretty easy on Joe Hamilton. Winner, leader, athletic, accurate, playmaker. You could go on and on and on with positives. I guess I could, the only negative, Tim, I could come up with is he's only 70 inches tall. You know, 5'10". The good Lord only gave him 70 inches, but he sure packed a lot into that 70. A lot of talent there. I agree with that, partner. Watkins comes to the bottom of the screen. John Myers goes to the top. Hamilton play action. Looks complete. He makes it look so easy, and it's another first down. Complete to Kelly Campbell. Keep in mind, Tech has scored at least 30 points in every game this year. It is a very powerful attack. Tech likes the fact that the corners play deep. Just going to come in, a little curl route. Got a machine that's kind of acting up, but it didn't stop the replay from showing you that it was a completed pass. And, and Tim over in Atlanta a couple of days ago talking to the Tech guys, they were really liking the chances against soft corners. Campbell with 45 receptions, averaging 17 yards a catch. That was for 12. Here they go again to Gregory. Another big hole inside the 20 and all the way down near the 15-yard line. Sean Gregory. Now, season-ending injuries to both Joe Burns and Phillip Rogers have put Gregory in the starting role, and he has responded nicely. Well, it's he, watch the blocking up front there from 75 Burns and Noah King. But you know, one of the things that makes it easier for those guys is that Ralph Region, the offensive coordinator, sends it right, sends it left, he throws it, he runs options. You never know where he's coming from. First down, Des White at the top of your screen. Kelly Campbell at the bottom. Hamilton on the option, flicks it out to Gregory. And this time, Gregory's thrown for a loss by Byron Thweet. Virginia two for two on option plays. They are not going to let Joe Hamilton run the ball against option. They're going to force the pitch with that man right there. He'll come to Joe. Joe will pitch it correctly. But what happens is the linebacker loops over the top, makes a terrific play, and lost yardage is not much. You don't see that very often from Georgia Tech offensively. So it'll bring up second down and call it 11. Look at the production inside the red zone, inside the 20 <laughs> by Georgia Tech. 24 touchdowns inside the 20 this year. That's production. Three-step drop, throws the out pattern. That's his tight end, Matt Bay. And Matt Bay is down near the nine-yard line. Mark it right at the nine. So he's used play action. He's been successful with the pass. And here they are now on third down with Hamilton. Looks into the flat. It's complete. Gregory gets wrecked and then knocked out of bounds at the seven. Antoine Harris just tattooed him. What a terrific tackle. Joe's looking right. Hamilton wants to go right. Listen to the hit. Ooh, wow. Oh, this guy's really good. I mean, Harris has been a starter since he's been here. What a terrific tackle there. It had to be a perfect tackle. That's a first down. I want to tell you, for Antoine Harris, that was a slobber knocker. Terrific <laughs> tackle. Here's Monje with the 24-yard field goal attempt, and it's good. So Georgia Tech, with a very impressive drive to open the game, takes the early lead, 3-0. Georgia Tech in its first drive, 11 plays, 64 yards, four first downs, and the Yellow Jackets are on the board, 3-0. Here's well, Philip Newman kicking off. Davon Mason and Ahmad Hawkins. Hawkins puts it on the ground. And then gets back to the 15. Not the way that Virginia wanted to start. Take a look at the Chili's starting lineups. First, for the Cavaliers offensively, the line, La Montaigne, Woodson, St. Clair is having the best year of all these guys. Routson and Barnes. It's a big, strong offensive line. 
and it does a nice job for Thomas Jones. Coffey, Ahmad Hawkins, who just dropped that kickoff, and Billy Baber, the tight end, into the backfield. How about this? David Rivers starts at quarterback today because of the Ellis concussion. He was the long snapper. He starts at quarterback today, and of course, in the backfield is Jones and Sutton. Here's Thomas Jones, the leading rusher in the nation. Picks up five, picks up ten, first down, Virginia. And there's a late flag. And it's going to be a face mask against the Yellow Jackets, and they'll move it down even further. Look for the face mask at the end of the play, and there you see it. Clearly a face mask, good call. Five yards, not flagrant. That's against uh, the, the freshman, Greg Gathers. He's going to be a great player, but he makes uh, some mistakes like that with youth. So Joe Hamilton comes out, goes five for five, and in his first carry, Thomas Jones picks up ten. Here's Jones again looking for a block. This time they have him, and he loses a yard. Mara Clark made the tackle, and it was an outstanding tackle. Here is the Georgia Tech defense. Gathers, Kreisen, Watson, and Claybrooks across the front. The linebackers are solid. Wimbush, Mitchell, and Rogers. Nick Rogers is having a terrific year, the second fastest guy on the team. And Tillman, Myers, Young, and Clark in that secondary. Linebackers will be without Chris Edwards today. He will not play. That's a problem for Tech. Three sprained his shoulder. Here's Rivers, dangerous pass, incomplete. It was thrown in the direction of Ahmad Hawkins. Well, Rivers, it's kind of hard to really give a scouting report on him because we don't know a lot. I know he's a tough quarterback, and I know he has a good, strong arm. His weaknesses so far, he's been indecisive, and, of course, he lacks the experience. A great number here. He's only, he only has 17 pass attempts in his career. Joe Hamilton has 892. Talk about experience wow. against inexperience. Well, Rivers is 6'3", 219 pounds. Big guy, Junior, is going to have to come up big here. Third down and long. Plenty of time for Rivers. He throws down the middle. Incomplete. He had his guy open, too. I'm telling you, folks, Billy McMullen had come open in the middle of the field. He had the inside on the safety, Chris Young. David Rivers is 0 for 1. Watch McMullen at the top of the screen. He will run a fly route, but when his quarterback has extra time, he just goes to the football. That is a poor throw, young beaten defensively. Rivers 0 for 1. So Donnie Scott comes on, number 90, to punt it away. He's been a little bit inconsistent this year, but has an awfully strong leg. Marvius Hester at the 25, fair catch ball. And that's where they'll mark it. So a 44-yard punt. And the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech leading 3-0 will have the ball for the second time today. Number 17 there with his back to you is Dan Ellis, who had that concussion last week. So number 15, David Rivers, gets the start today. He was the long snapper for the Cavaliers. There he is. He just completed his first series. Georgia Tech having the ball for the second series today. They got a field goal on the first trip. Here's Joe Hamilton on first down. Again, he wants to pass. And he's now six for six. That's complete to Kelly Campbell. And Campbell has three of those six completions. Campbell has emerged as a great receiver. Des White was the guy coming into the season. Little play fake here, zone defense, plenty of protection. And Georgia Tech, Tim, throws the crossing routes about as well as any team I've seen in a long time. That receiving duo, Kelly Campbell and Des White, have combined for 75 catches and 10 touchdowns. Third down and nine for Tech. The quick pass to Myers. He's got it complete. Inside the 40, 30, down to the 25-yard line. John Myers on a quick slant, and Hamilton put it there perfectly for the 32-yard gain. Well, they come with a slant route from underneath here. You'll see Myers and a perfectly thrown ball. You know, that's a play if the cornerback Tim is at the right if he's there at the right time he can break it up or pick it off you can't be in between on that though when you're playing cornerback that time he caught the cornerback in between Harris and he got burned it's only Myers six catch of the year Hamilton still perfect Georgia Tech inside the 20 this year has been unbelievably productive 
Gregory inside the 10, still on his feet to the five yard line, inside the five. You know, Sean Gregory has done just a terrific job stepping in for Burns and Rodgers who are hurt. Well, what he does, watch Gregory here. He'll get the ball, but the problem is that he over, overcomes a missed block right there. You have a crack back block attempt by number nine, Kerry Watkins, and he didn't touch anything. He threw a no-hitter out there, and this guy made the yardage on his own. Just bad tackling, along with the fine running. Second down and goal. Gregory to the four, and met by Crowell. Crowell, a young, true freshman. This guy plugs holes extremely well. If, if his defensive lineman can occupy those blockers like he did right there, Tim, you know being a linebacker, that's your chance to step up and be a stud. He did it again. They're a very good tackling team for the most part. Crowd now on his feet. Third down, just inside the five for Tech. Look for option, even though it looks like they're not in an option formation. They now are with the man in motion. That's Campbell. This is Hamilton. That's a touchdown. Kelly Campbell with the catch. And Georgia Tech scores again. And Hamilton is still perfect. Eight for eight for Joe Hamilton. Well, and he overcomes the mix-up here in the backfield. Watch him. He'll almost stumble and go down. So he gets by his first man, which is his own man. And that little play has worked for these guys on many occasions. He makes it look simple. He is some kind of talent. Luke Monge comes on for the extra point attempt. He splits the sticks, and it's 10-0 Yellow Jackets. 5.28 to play in the first quarter, and the seventh-ranked Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets so far are in control. Ranked as one of the greatest places in the country to live, Charlottesville, Virginia. All the kids out here this afternoon on a beautiful afternoon at Scott Stadium. Philip Newman preparing to kick off for Georgia Tech. Number 15, Avon Mason and Ahmad Hawkins are standing deep for the Cavaliers. Nine plays, 74 yards, just over three and a half minutes. Joe Hamilton, eight for eight. This kick's going to go out of bounds. So Virginia will get great field position up to 35. Man, that, that was so bad. He may have sprained his ankle. You ever see the guy sprained an ankle on a kickoff? <laughs> First down, Cavaliers. Here's the option. Rivers is hit immediately, and there's a loss on the play. Tackle made by Greg Gathers. So Georgia Tech has had the ball offensively two possessions. Joe Hamilton, eight for eight, and Georgia Tech with a field goal on the first possession, a touchdown on the second, leading Virginia 10-0 with 5.02 to play in the first quarter. Tim Brandt, Dean Blevins, Chip Tarkington with you at Scott Stadium. Charlottesville, Virginia. Cavaliers with the football, second down and long. Rogers with plenty of time again. It throws an interception. Picked off by Ross Mitchell. A poorly thrown pass, and Mitchell has the pick. Well, I started to say before the snap that Georgia Tech has Virginia exactly where they want them. Ten down, and they have Rivers in the game a little rattled, and they're going to make him beat them. So they're saying, 15, go ahead and beat us. We're going to sit back in zone. We'll give you the time to throw. You make the mistake, and we'll capitalize on it. Deeney never looked off. No, he, he went right to that receiver, and with his eyes, led the defenders right there. Wow. Shaky start for Rivers. Let's see if Joe Hamilton, in the race for the Heisman, can stay perfect. Hamilton with plenty of time across the middle again. He goes to Campbell, and that is five catches for Campbell and nine for nine for Joe Heisman. So, and I said that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> well, what they did once again is clear out, and they're going to run another crossing route. Joe Hamilton throws to spots really, really well. They do a lot of clearing out. They, they just blew off the corner and the safety on the far side, ran the crossing route. Joe goes to the spot. He's hit five different receivers, and Campbell with his fifth reception. That was a pickup of 14. Three-step drop, quick pass, incomplete. His first miss of the game. 
Second down and ten. The option. Outside they go, and Klinkscale down inside the 20. Tim, Joe Hamilton not only does the, the things that player that teams need in terms of leadership and motivation and, and having people follow him, he makes right decisions, correct decisions. It's almost flawless. He will have 10,000 yards if he stays healthy during his career. Yeah. Now, he's hoping that the Heisman is voted on for a year award and not a career award, but that's not bad having 10,000 yards. Just became the ACC career leader ahead of Sean Jones, who was a former Yellow Jacket on that 1990 national championship team. Straight ahead they go. This is Gregory. Cuts down Georgia Tech. Sean Gregory straight ahead untouched for 18 yards in the touchdown. So what we thought would be a terrific game and a great matchup so far has been all Georgia Tech. And here's another play off of that flanker sweet play. Remember, they handed it off last week, so that's what Virginia has to be thinking. But no, you don't give it to him. You go right up the gut. And you can drive a truck through that hole. And this is about to be a route. Monjay's extra point is good. And it's 17-0 Tech. David Rivers is saying, come on, special teams, help me out. This will be Ahmad Hawkins at the 9. To the 20. Right now, Georgia Tech is flying high. But here's Jones straight ahead. Needs a block. Out to the 25, gain of 5. Felipe Clay Claybrooks made the tackle to end the first quarter. So the first 15 belongs to Georgia Tech. It's all Yellow Jackets, 17 to nothing. We start the second 15 at Scott Stadium. The Cavaliers trailing by 17. Have it on second down. Here's Jones who breaks the tackle and leaps over another out to the 25. Let's go downstairs. Here's Chip. Timmy, I'll tell you, there are a lot of unhappy people along the Virginia sidelines. Monday of this week, Coach George Wells had a real choose session with this football team, explaining the importance of winning out for that seven-win season. They've had it 12 straight years. He explained the importance. There are a lot of stunned people on the Virginia sidelines. Thomas Jones even hanging his head just a wee bit as the offense came on the field for this last series. Well, he better get the head up. There's a lot of football yet to be played. Down by 17 as we start the second quarter. Rivers is out of the shotgun on third down. They need six. Has time, has a completion. His first of the day, and it's a first down Cavaliers. Tavon Mason makes the catch, and they mark it at the 35. The, that, that type of pass with falling down the way they have, 17 to nothing, is the hardest pass in the world to complete. I mean, you've got to be confident in yourself to sit back and throw that thing in there because it might look good and open on slow motion. When you're playing in that position, that is a very difficult throw. And a questionable late hit. Let's see here. I'm an old quarterback. I say it heavy on the old. I say that was a late hit. Quarterback, two national title teams. Does that help to have that completion? It's got to help his confidence. Here's Jones. Big pickup, gain of seven. I would think a young guy like that needs confidence. Take a look at the Dell Game Solutions. Well, they've got to find a way, Tim, for Jones to get him 150 yards. That's key for them. And I really believe that they expect to throw a couple of deep touchdown passes. Now, on the other side of it, Georgia Tech has to make Rivers make the plays, and that's what they're doing right now. Well, Rivers is smart. He gives it this time to Jones, who goes out across the 45 to the 46-yard line. I knew I was going to call him Rivers one time today, so that's my uh, that's my lone mistake on that word, okay? That name. <laughs> Slap me if I do it again. Well, you said he needs 150 yards. He now has 29. Nice block there by Southern, the fullback. down Wahoos play action they dump it off to Southern he's at midfield down to the 40 and he's a load Anthony Southern is six feet 245 pounds good all-around athlete 
and he picks up 14. All right, it's not one player doing it. It's all 11 doing it. You get great protection. You get a nice throw, and then you, I want to show you a block here coming up by Casey Crawford after the completion goes out to Southern. Watching your screen here, you're about to see a collision right. We missed it, but it was, trust me. <laughs> it happened. <laughs> uh, but it is, a, it's, a, it's a team game. It's not just the quarterback. He has to do his part, but he needs help. So they move the chains again. It's a first down for the Cavaliers just outside the 40. Play action again. Rodgers has room if he wants to run, and he's a big guy. Inside the 35, close to a first down, down to the 31. Well, and Rivers gets these fans on their feet for the first time today, and I believe they like the athleticism that he brings. Ellis is not a guy that the former quarterback is not a guy who's really mobile, and, and Rivers isn't going to win many foot races, but he's he was nimble that time. You know, for the first time this afternoon, he looks like he's gained a little confidence. Exactly. Showing yep. a little emotion. Well, I think it was that crossing route he threw about five minutes ago. He runs pretty well for a guy at 6'3", 220. So he picks up nine and second down. They need one. Jones breaks the tackle and ends up losing two. Mark Clark made the stop. Erwin Eccles got there first. Well, the Good goal, pursuit. pardon me, Tim, the goal of Georgia Tech coming in and stopping Jones was to not get in a one-on-one a one -on -one situation. There's Ruth right there. He says, we can't get to where we have one guy trying to tackle him. He said, we may not even touch him. And that put, that way, that play right there, you see that he hit the middle, bounced outside, and they had several white jerseys. Ted Ruth, one of the old Yellow Jacket players. Yeah, an All-American. Good guy. I think he's going to do a good job down there. Third down and two, and this is a big play for the Cavaliers. There's pressure, complete. This is Crawford, and Casey Crawford down inside the 15. So a 17-yard gain, they only needed three. But Casey Crawford, who is a terrific blocker in all ACC tight end, but has had an injury play career, makes a big play here. That's a great job by the quarterback hanging in there against the pressure. That's the best play Rivers has had all day. Looks like a different guy than we yeah, saw in the first quarter. Third down across the middle. Touchdown, Cavaliers! Billy Faber with the touchdown catch in the end zone. Believers, you'll find a soft area in the defense in the zone. There's four receivers out on this play trying to find open areas. And Georgia Tech held up for a while but couldn't, and that's a big touchdown for Virginia. So we have a look at Todd Braverman for the first time this afternoon to attempt the extra point, and it's good. And so the Cavaliers, with an impressive drive, led by the young junior, David Rivers, the touchdown to Faber. They're down by 10. Virginia converted four third downs on that drive. They get a touchdown, and the Cavaliers pull within 10, 17 to 7. And the crowd's back alive at Scott Stadium. Jim, you think there's any parallel with this that their quarterback performed extremely well in that series and they marched it down and put it in the end zone? He's got to do that all day. That's a good looking drive right there. Will Glover will be standing inside the five. This is a high kick. It'll be taken by White. And a fine return to the 28-yard line. Wahoo crowd on its feet. Channing defense. First down, Yellow Jackets. Sean Gregory to the line of scrimmage, maybe two. Tim, you know option quarterbacks have to make right decisions, and I can tell you that if you make the right decision on a read and you score a touchdown, it's as good as throwing a touchdown pass. I asked Joe Hamilton that very question, and after this play, we'll hear his reaction to what it feels like. 
Second down and eight. Gregory again. Here's Joe Hamilton. I feel this way. I, anything. I mean, if to hand it off regular in the backfield and to score or to move the chains is gratifying to me. You know, I, I, I'm just the type of guy that, you know, have to have first downs, have to have points scored, and, and now that's the way you win. How it's done, it really doesn't matter at all to me. He'll have a chance here to get a first down. It's third down, and he need four. Out of the shotgun. With pressure. Throws off balance, and it's complete. Kenny Watkins makes the catch, and I thought that was going to be picked off. There are flags down. Hamilton threw off balance as he was hit, and the ball was a dead duck. Joe has a terrific release, extremely quick release here, and this is the time that he needs it. But he also, after he feels the pressure coming from underneath, he needs a great reception. That ball is thrown up, and this guy has become a receiver. I mean, Kelly Campbell can flat out play. Antoine Harris just mistimed it. Yeah, and there's did. the face mask by Shannon Taylor, number nine. That's why they're ranked seventh in the country. What looked like a bad play from the get-go turns out to be a big play. Straight ahead they go. Twelve first downs already for Joe Hamilton and company. And, you know, he called the timeout a moment ago, Tim, because he didn't like the play they were going to get into or perhaps the play clock was running down. But that's the one improvement that he's made the most. That, that's the, the area where he's made the most improvement. This team does not run what's called dead plays, bad plays in the defenses that won't be successful. He is really smart about that. Second down, they need five. Gregory got the first down and more inside the 15 to the 13-yard line. Sean Gregory with a terrific afternoon so far. That's not the same guy I saw practice the other day, Tim. You know, we came back talking about that workout, and, and that's that had, that guy had some zip right there. Sean G Gregory gr got through that hole very, very quickly. He's a very conscientious guy, and for well, the numbers here, just out of control. Well, what is that, 232 to, to 80? Sean Gregory with his third start of the year. He averages six yards a carry at 72 yards here already. Speaks to the depth now in that program. First down, here's Hamilton. Inside the 10 to the three yard line. <laughs> Dean had a chance to visit with John Carmen, the right tackle, and ask him what it's like to actually block for Joe Hamilton. You know, it's, it's a good thing, it's a bad thing. You know, you have him back there, you know, if you have trouble with a guy, you block, and he can scramble, get out of the huddle, because he's a true back, he's a quarterback, he can, he can run the ball. But sometimes he'll take off running, and I can't see him because I'm blocking my guy. I don't see my guy make a tackle. I'm like, Joe, where are you going? You know, and he says, Come on, John, you gotta get that block. I'm like, Joe, I can see you. <laughs> but you know, he, he, he's a good guy. It's just a lot of fun. Gregory inside the five, touchdown, Georgia Tech. Sean Gregory. And Carmen did his job along with Key King, Burks, and Brown, and they just took. Blue jerseys into the end zone with them. So Carmen blocks for not only Joe Hamilton, but also for Gregory as well. And that's becoming a pretty good offensive line up there with a lot of talent and a lot of diversity in offense. And the extra point is good. Philip Newman to kick off for Georgia Tech and Ahmad Hawkins and Tavon Mason are deep for Virginia. This is going to be Hawkins at the six. Hawkins with a hole. Ahmad Hawkins out to the 38. Fred Baskin made the tackle after a 32-yard return. Drivers right. going deep, looking for McMullen, and McMullen makes a spectacular catch. Hey, that's what happens, Tim, when you get a quarterback with confidence. This is the play action we talked about. This is nothing but a streak route, a nine route. When he gets beside his cornerback, he knows he has it. Rivers does a pretty good job of getting it there. If it's even farther, it's a touchdown. But Rivers is feeling good about what he's doing right now. How about the catch by McMullen, the talented freshman? 
deceptive speed, kind of lopes Strider, but he gets out there. You make a completion, and it gives Jones some room to run. Exactly. One thing leads to another. You know, you watch Georgia Tech. They run outside, then they run inside. They throw short, they throw long. They keep you off balance. And now you see, with the confidence coming up with the quarterback, their offense is having success, and it puts the onus back on this guy, Ted Roof, defensively as the coordinator. Gain of eight by Jones. Here he is again. Push down, Virginia, they'll move the chains. Chicago Bears as well. Jones, inside the 10 to the touchdown, Virginia. Thomas Jones from 10 yards out, got a great block from Routson and goes into the end zone. Thomas Jones getting untracked. And so the defensive coordinator and the head coach are conferring on how to stop them. And George Welsh feeling better. But watch Routson, 56, leads the way. And Thomas Jones sees a hole, and he gets right through it. His acceleration is terrific. His vision is terrific, and he's a special back. Special person. Graduated yeah. in May with a degree in psychology, and he did it in three years. Here's the extra point. Three years. That is hard to do. Todd Braverman adds the extra point, and with 155 left in the first half, it's a 10-point game. A look at Evan Routson, who made a key block to free Jones for the touchdown. And when Jones came to the sidelines, went up and gave Routson a hug, and Barnes and St. Clair and Woodson and LaMontagne, and told every one of them, that's the way to block. What a huge drive. We've got a game. This is Des White to the 22. Cavaliers need to make a stop defensively. And it's first down. Plenty of time. Intercepted by Virginia. Picked off by Isabel. Cavaliers are going to have a chance to cut into the lead even more. If Brennan Israel, Isabel, makes the interception, and look out, here come the Cavs. I don't think Joe Hamilton saw Isabel. In the gun, he takes his st step, he's seven steps deep into the pocket. And Isabel, Tim, that ball was thrown thinking that Isabel was not there. How do you miss him? He's 6'3 and 240. For whom the bell tolls, Cavaliers have it. Best starting field position of the day. First down, Cavaliers. Incomplete. Play marker still shows fourth down. Now they start to change it, and they do to second with 21 seconds left in the half. Great pressure that time by the rookie Winbush, the linebacker, in the face of Rivers. 21 seconds left. Cavaliers have one touch, or one timeout left. Here's Rivers with time. It's complete. Down inside the 15. One of them coffee. One timeout remaining. 14 seconds. They can use the timeout or they can get on the ball and stop the clock. They elect to use the timeout here. Boy, I'm not sure that's the right call. I don't like it. I would have gone to the like clock it. play and just had Rivers throw it into the dirt. That's what I do. You get an extra offensive play. Now you don't. Rivers hangs in the pocket. This is a big time throw. That's why they're excited about it because the zip he had on the football. If that ball is thrown any softer, it's intercepted or at least deflected. But right now, Rivers, 10 of 16, 121 yards, a touchdown. He has, he has found his rhythm, hasn't he? He has 14 seconds to work with. Yeah, has to go to the end zone. If you get pressure, don't eat the ball. Don't eat the ball because the clock will expire on you. With time. Touchdown, Kevin Coffey. Rivers to Coffey. And that was a dart. That was 
a big time throw. Rivers feeling good about it. He's got a little skinny post coming in here. And that ball had a lot of, it had enough air under it, but it had enough zip on it to be a perfectly thrown ball. This is a different guy than we saw in the first quarter. Todd Graberman to add another point. Let's go downstairs, Chip Tarkington with George O'Leary. Coach, typical Virginia, Georgia Tech first half. It sure is. Uh, we're just giving up too many big plays. They get a rush going. You know, we're just not getting to the quarterback. We blew some coverages, so we just got to regroup at halftime. It's not unusual, though, to see this kind of game, is it? Well, I wish it wouldn't be unusual. Thank you. That's George O'Leary back upstairs. I'll tell you this, even in a turnaround like this, where you know George is ha not happy about that second quarter, he still has that sense of humor. 24-21, Georgia Tech, that's the halftime score right now. Let's take you back to New York with John Saunders and Terry Bell. Ready to start the second half. Let's go downstairs. Chip Tarkin in just a moment ago talked to George Welsh. Coach, great momentum turn around there right at the end of the first half. That has to give your team some big boost going into the second half. Yeah. Well, if we would have been down 24-7, it wouldn't have been so pretty. But I'm still not sure we can stop them. They're awfully good on offense, as you know. Rivers has really started playing well, though. The yeah, second he's, he's doing better. He needs to get a feel of the game. He made it, you know, but, but we got to go with him. Yeah, he, he's the best guy we got now. I don't want to play. I don't want to have to play uh, a Dan Ellis because he hasn't practiced. Good luck the second half. Thank you. Want to update an injury for you. Georgia Tech, Chris Young, strong safety, will not come back. He's had a concussion. Back upstairs. And the Cavaliers will have it first in the second half after an explosion in the second quarter. It's a three-point game. Georgia Tech took that huge lead in the first quarter. It was all Yellow Jackets. And then Rivers found his rhythm, and the Cavaliers came roaring back. This kick is blasted, and will go out of the back of the end zone for Virginia. We'll start at the 20-yard line. Take a look at the first half statistics, the Morgan Stanley Dean Winter half. This is a bad number for Virginia. They're, they're whipped there, but look at them coming back in the passing department. Total yards still favors Georgia Tech, but the two turnovers makes this an even ball game. This number here is remarkable. Five of seven, their numbers are fantastic. And you notice, Tim, no punts for George for a Georgia Tech. Is that right? Is it 18 on the season? I keep All seeing that stat, and I just don't believe it. Well, it's a great stat that you bring up because Virginia's had to punt 49 times coming into this game this year. They have two today. Georgia Tech hasn't punted yet. You're right, on the 18th of the year. Here's the first play, second half. It's out to the tight end. Casey Crawford out to the 34-yard line and a first down for Virginia. So that'll help David Rivers right away to start the second half. And there's a smile on the inexperienced quarterback's face. Well, he's feeling good about it. I, I think George saying that uh, he's got the feel of the game now is exactly right. First down, Cavaliers. Thomas Jones dives ahead for five. Tackle made by Gathers. Take a look at the first half position possessions by Virginia. Wow, does this just tell the entire story of the game about the quarterback Rivers? Down south, no good there, the first three. Gets the confidence. Very simple in the Tim. That just bodes for a good second half. Well, I'll believe you on that. How many national championships were you involved in? A uh, couple. I hung around for a couple of them. Dean Blevins, quarterback at Oklahoma. I grew up watching him. <laughs> Second down, here's the pass incomplete. Uh, Gathers gets back there, 55. This guy's going to be a heck of a football player for Georgia Tech. Look at the first two drives. And then he got a couple of completions, as you mentioned, and the confidence grew. And then look at the last four drives. Unbelievable. You know, I know that Dan Ellis is, is the starting quarterback, but I sense that they don't have a problem saying, David Rivers, you're our starting quarterback. You know what I mean? Although I was surprised what George said at halftime. We got to stick with him. We got to go with him. He's all we got. <laughs> I'm not surprised at anything George says. Third down and long. Here's Hawkins. He's got speed. To the 44-yard line before Colbert takes him down. His first catch. Georgia Tech is really missing strong safety Chris Young. They're gonna they're having to play a lot of younger players. They go underneath the zone coverage, and then a bad position. Ricardo Winbush, 42, should have made that tackle short of the first down. 
So Ahmad Rashad Hawkins picks up 15. They move the chains. First down, Wahoos. Jones. Almost broke it. Thomas Jones struggled in the first half because they were keying on him. Kind of get the feel right now that the last team that has possession of the football wins. Ten carries, 48 yards for Thomas Jones. Here's Jones. Close to a first down. Ross Mitchell met him in the hole. You know, you hear Dane mentioned in every Heisman conversation, you don't hear Jones. You know what? Look at those numbers. They're very close, but the one on the bottom actually goes in favor of Mr. Jones, 160 a game to 155 a game. And, you know, I have to disagree with Terry Bowden. I listened to him at halftime, and he was talking about the Heisman being a career award for Dane because he'd break a record, and certainly a record he says isn't broken very often. I agree with that. But it's supposed to go to the best player in college football. I'm not sure Ron Dane is that right now. Well, I don't know at this point either. I'm holding my vote, but uh, I would agree in your disagreement with Terry, and I agree with most everything he has said this year, and it's been great to have him aboard, but I do disagree there. I think that it is for the year. Ron Dane's had a heck of a year, but it's not for a career. Fourth down and one for the Cavaliers. Will they gamble? You bet. Yeah, they have to. You know, you don't want to punt it at that point, and if you attempt a field goal, you're looking at a 52-yard attempt. So, well, Braverman has the leg strength, but right now you need more points. Here's Washington comes into the ball game at fullback. Thomas Jones, he's loose. Touchdown, Thomas Jones. Virginia takes the lead. leading rusher Thomas Jones often this happens if you break through that first line of tacklers you can be gone that time they got a great block from backup pulled by Cat Washington and instead of Braverman from 52 for the field goal here he is for the extra point and it's good Well, we thought it would be a shootout. It's turned into one. Cavaliers, 28. Georgia Tech, 24. Oh, Thomas Jones, the nation's leader. The Scott Stadium is rocking. The Cavaliers of Virginia have just taken the lead over Georgia Tech, the seventh-ranked team in the country. Thomas Jones for the Heisman. Not much talk about it outside of Virginia, but he is some kind of special. Jones had 48 yards in the first half. He's got 47 on that drive alone. Ironically, one of the best things for Thomas Jones today is the number of people nationally keeping in touch with this game to see what Joe Hamilton does in the Heisman. David Green's kick to White or Glover. This is going to be Des White, two yards deep. And he's drilled at the 17. Parker Lang with the tackle. Second down, they need 10. And this will be close to the first down as Kerry Watkins goes out of bounds at the 29. First half possessions, Georgia Tech, they put up points, don't they? They got a field goal to begin with, touchdown. The two turnovers, Tim, the only things that kept them from scoring the entire first half on every possession. Tech leads the nation in scoring and in total offense. Tech averages 516 yards a game. First down and 15. There's Gregory back to the line of scrimmage, plus two. To the 32, Byron Thweet makes the tackle. You know, I mentioned St. Clair. I, I knew in this ball game we have two outstanding centers. St. Clair is the Virginia center. He's a guy that'll probably play in the NFL. But Noah King is a terrific player as well. And 
the offensive guys up front for Georgia Tech have continued to get better. And there's a good look at Noah King. King started at guard last year, moved over to center. And you're right, he's done a marvelous job there. Second down and seven for Tech. The pitch, the first down. Sidney Ford has a gain of 12. Once again, Virginia saying, Joe, we're not going to let you carry the football. It's option. And one way to keep him from throw keeping the ball is to have a man on him. They pitch, then you have to be an open field tackler, and it's a positive play, even though Hamilton didn't carry. Peck's got a drive going. Here's Hamilton. Quick out the pass. Got the first. Got more. And Campbell's down inside the 35. The ball's loose. Who got it? They may have called him down. It's Georgia Tech football, so a big game. They move the chains. Boy, Kerry Watkins lost it when he hit the ground, a gain of 23. You know, Watkins is a nice receiver. We just haven't heard as much because the other two have been on a roll. Let's see if this is a good call. Well, I don't know about that, Tim. Well, Campbell put it on the ground, but watch. Watkins gets to it. Here's Campbell, and then Watkins comes in and gets the ball. Gotcha. Fumble, you're right. Fumble and a Georgia Tech recovery. So a pickup of 23. Here's the Campbell reverse. And he gets inside the 30. That's a great looking play there, but you and I talked about this last night. The timing, it just drive you crazy. Yeah, you're right. I mean, Joe Hamilton has to know when this man is coming, the flanker sweep because he's got to time it perfectly. Now, that time, actually, Tim, the timing wasn't as good as it was last week when they scored the touchdown. That was one of the reasons that play wasn't as successful, but still a positive play, second and five. Campbell leads the ACC in receiving yards, 107 yards a game. It also gives him a lot of all-purpose. Today, he's got six catches, 78. Here's Hamilton on the keeper, 220. Now, what's happening here is Ralph Friedgen is saying, you know, we're going to run option one way or another and get my quarterback to run the football. If you're not going to let us come on the outside and have Joe keep the ball, I'm going to have you let him come back here. Boy, they give you so many looks, Dean. Yeah, they do. They run out option out of every formation. They can be in four wides, bring a man in motion, and still be able to run option. Antoine Harris was shaken up on the play. Timmy Spruill comes into the game at right corner. It's a game of cat and mouse now, and I haven't seen a better quarterback playing cat and mouse in number 14. First down, here's Gregory. And Sean Gregory close to the 15. Isabel makes the tackle. Well, I'll tell you this. Joe Hamilton's height may make some NFL scouts a little bit leery, but his multiple dimensional talents make him the most dangerous player in all of college football, bar none. Well, you know, Doug Flutie is 37. He's with Buffalo and doing quite well. I'd say Buffalo, it worked once. Take this guy or somebody else. Well, he'll be drafted, I predict. Second down and call it six. Hamilton, big hole inside the 10. Joe Hamilton to the three. Terrific block by the left tackle, Chris Brown. It freed up Hamilton. Yeah, you called it. Watch 65 right here at the top of your screen. He's going to knock out the end, and that's the first time all night the man on the end of the line of scrimmage has been pushed outside so the quarterback can jump inside. Dean, that is the 20th first down of the game for Georgia Tech. And they're losing. Sean Gregory, touchdown. Georgia Tech, and they're not losing anymore. <laughs> Yeah, how many times with 8.07 remaining in the third quarter do you have 20 first downs and you're trailing? The way this game is going, we may have 60 points a team. Right up the gut, the offensive line has taken over the game for Georgia Tech. Extra point by Luke Manger. Georgia Tech 31, Virginia 28. 8.07 to play in the third quarter on Sean Gregory's touchdown. 
Thomas Jones getting ready along with Rivers. Virginia's about to get the ball back. And they're trailing 31 to 28 to Georgia Tech. Ahmad Hawkins at the goal line. Flag comes in. Georgia Tech is solid in the kicking game. Here's Thomas Jones again. Well, Jones is special, and George Welsh knows it. And I've been around some good ones. I was at Penn State when Harris, Lydell Mitchell, Franco Harris, and then Capoletti were, uh, came along. And then we've had some good ones here, the last one being Tiki Barber, so. He's just awfully good. I don't know, something happened to him. He's better than he was last year when he was very good. He just combines all the, you know, he's tough, he's strong, he's quick, and he's, uh, he's got great vision right now. He's making all of, doing all the right things. Jones picks up a couple of more. You know, I, that's pretty good company that he mentions there. I played against Harris, Lydell Mitchell, even Capoletti, and they were talented. That's Jones better than them is saying yeah. so. That's fast company. I think the thing that separates him is his lateral acceleration. He is terrific with his lateral acceleration. Watch him dart through these throws. Some people compare him to an Emmett Smith. Most underrated, underpublicized back in the nation. Here he is. Thomas Jones. He's loose to the 50. All the way down inside the 40. Thomas Jones. acceleration this time he just bounces outside he didn't have to use too much lateral acceleration but acceleration north and south he uses Tillman runs him down the superstar and if there's one knock on Thomas Jones it's that he doesn't have the breakaway speed Thomas Jones had just over 40 yards in the first half he now has 142 drivers to the flat Washington is inside the 30. Let's go downstairs. Here's Chip Tarkington. All right, thanks, Tim. We're here with Thomas Jones' daddy, Thomas Jones. And interesting of that. I guess if you had a Heisman vote, it wouldn't be any question with it. No doubt in my mind. No gotta, doubt in my mind. You got to be proud of that young man. Well, I'm definitely proud of him. He's done very well all the way from peanut football all the way up to where he is now. And I attribute it, one, to the Lord above. Secondly, is following a good recipe of hard work and discipline to get him to where he is now. Now, his wife, Betty, would be here. But you know what? She's with Julius, their youngest son, Notre Dame, taking on Tennessee and Knoxville tonight on ESPN. Here's Southern with a big hole. He's inside the 10. Tyree Foreman, correction. And Tyree Foreman with his first carry of the night. Well, they're just gutting. I mean, Thomas Jones comes at you one play, and then they rest him a little bit. You got a blitz coming, and that is the perfect play to be called into that defense. So everything's working for Virginia. Tyree Foreman, another Maryland product, plays fullback and tailback. Jones has had his breather. Here he is. There's that lateral acceleration right there, Tim. Down inside the two. All right, if you thought I was just throwing big words around with lateral acceleration, I'm not. They aren't big words for starters, but this is this is what I'm talking about. Watch him in the hole here. Boom, boom. Always moving forward. Always moving forward. Feet moving, good lean. But he goes laterally as fast as he goes forward. Terrific block by La Montaigne and Southern. Second down and goal. Jones, whoa, is he hit? Ross Mitchell met him right in the hole. And Thomas Jones may be looking out the ear hole. Wow. That'll rattle the fillings. Put your eyeballs in your forehead. Ross Mitchell is a plugger. That's what he does well. 45 and wide. He's not as good a coverage linebacker as they would like to see, but there's no coverage on that play. They better hit the corners. Try them on the edge. Third down and goal. 
incomplete. Boy, it's disappointing for Virginia to get it down there that quickly and that easily and to come away with what will most likely be three points to tie it. And conversely, a nice job of regrouping by Georgia Tech. Well, if you can read body language, George Welsh agreed with you. It is frustrating and disappointing. He was shaking his head. So Todd Braverman comes on, and he's been on a roller coaster ride. He missed the big kick in the Peach Bowl against Georgia. Beat North Carolina in the first game of the 50-yarder. There he is with a 21-yard attempt. And it's good. 3.06 to play in the third period. We are tied at 31. Thomas Jones with a hand on his back and a towel around his neck, 146 yards and two touchdowns already in this ball game. And we still have 3.06 to play in the third period. We are tied at 31. The last three games between these two teams has been decided by a total of 13 points. Des White at the five. Taken down at the 19. The whole stadium is rocking. Joe Hamilton on first down. Right side, Gregory. Gregory is having a terrific night, but he's taken down immediately. 20 carries already for Sean Gregory. He's got 93 yards, but he also has three touchdowns. Keep in mind, season-ending injuries to both Joe Burns and Phillip Rogers have put Gregory in the starting role, and he has responded nicely. Tech has attacked the corners with the soft corners we talked about all game here early in the third. Second and nine. Hamilton under pressure, and he's sacked. Shannon Taylor got there to take him down. Quarterback to quarterback. This guy was recruited as a quarterback. Watch nine coming to your screen. He's blitzing, beats his man, and this is a guy, this guy, 6'3 and a half and 250, recruited as a quarterback. Third down and 20. Hamilton. It's complete to Des White, but it will not be enough for the first. Wayne Stooks made the tackle and kept him from the sticks. That's great defense. Almost got it. Almost got it, but didn't. Sure tackling, and you knew how much you could give up. Needed 20, got 17. Near the conclusion of today's game, we will select the Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Beginning this year, Chevrolet also will donate two $1,000 high school scholarships. Arlen Harris at the 27. Breaks a tackle. And takes it to the 36. A 44-yard punt. An 8-yard return. Drivers rolls behind tackle. Throws to completion. It's going to be close to the first down. It's marked up by the 45. So we'll go to the final 15, tied at 31. ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Georgia Tech scored first, 17-0. Second quarter belonged to the Cavaliers. Third quarter was close. Second down and 10, here's Thomas Jones across midfield and into Georgia Tech territory. Well, the Cavaliers of Virginia are three for three on fourth down conversions. We're deadlocked at 31. It's third down and long. It's complete again, close to the marker. Billy Baber made the catch at the 44-yard <laughs> line. Well, it's Tolbert made the stop, and I believe they're going to put it right down near that marker again. This is a sign of an offense taking advantage of everything it can. And many times, 
the defense has been in good position. There's been some gaping hole, but that was good defense right there. It's just a game of inches. By the nose of the ball, they moved the chain. First down, Wahoos. Thomas Jones to the 37-yard line. Let's go. Here's Thomas Jones. Thomas Jones inside the 30. And they'll move the chains again. Well, I'm looking at an offensive line out there that is big and strong and a hot running back and also a very tired defense. How about 169 yards? Ooh. Would you have thought that midway in the first quarter? No shot. Even at the end of the first half. Well, they say great backs get stronger as the game goes on. 31 carries. What was it John McKay once said? The ball's not heavy. <laughs> first down and 10. Jones, the reverse. Tried to throw it. And Ahmad Hawkins was wide open in the end zone. There's nobody even near him. But they couldn't get the pass off. Gathers with the play. Gathers saves seven points. Absolutely. Unbelievable. Well, here's the reverse setup. We can see it clearly from up here in 55 and white. The true rookie, Greg Gathers, makes a stop, Tim, or that is an easy touchdown. Ahmad Hawkins was so far open, it was unbelievable. What, 40 yards. I'm no one ever saw it. Yeah. So nobody went back with him. You're right, 40 yards by himself. Drivers with time, looking deep, going to McMullen. McMullen's open. Touchdown, Virginia! about how long passes were mandatory for Virginia in this game. This is a 6-4 receiver against a 5-8 cornerback. Braverman adds the extra point. It's the Cavaliers by 7. Drivers to McMullen and listen to this crowd. Georgia Tech, 31. George O'Leary is furious. And the freshman, Billy McMullen, has been sensational. Here's Dez White. Oh, Dez isn't running those back with reckless abandon, is he? I mean, it's good coverage, but... This game's momentum has shifted. So by the penalty, Georgia Tech gains 23 yards. Up by midfield, Joe Hamilton. To Sean Gregory. Still on his feet. And as close to a first down, I think he's got it in Virginia territory at the 40. This is great defense. I mean, it's it just... Uh, First down, Georgia Tech at the Cavalier 40. Hamilton on the option. Sean Gregory around the corner, and he picks up four. True to form, Virginia again has Joe Hamilton on the corner, and they say, no, Joe, pitch it. They're willing to give up four or five yards, but they don't want that quarterback cutting back across the grain as we've all seen him do so many times this year and exploding for a big play. Gregory now over 100 yards. He has 116. Rick Lance's defense has slowed Tech's running game in the past years. That's why Virginia's won five in the last seven. But Tech having some success this afternoon. Here's Sean Gregory again. Good stop here. The tackle made by Evans, who just chucked into the ball game for Luzon. This is good defense. This is a true triple option. The ball goes in the belly. The fullback, he's got to hand it because the end gets upfield. But Virginia forces Georgia Tech laterally, and you don't go around defenses this quick. 
Third down and three. And they're on their feet at Scott Stadium again. Hamilton. Incomplete. The ball was dropped. It was intended for Des White, and it was a little bit behind him. Well, they've got to consider going for this as we see Hamilton hanging in the pocket. It has a great release here. This is a catchable ball. That ball's got to be caught. Well, that's two drops on this drive. And this is what I thought, Tim. I think you go for it here because it's a, what, a 50-yard field goal if you want. If, if you have to kick it, and otherwise you do have to punt it, which you're not going to do. Fourth down and three. You want it in Hamilton's hands? Yes. He's not going to get it. Stavonich got there first. And Joe Hamilton was absolutely not an inch. Well, Stamenich has had to fill the very big shoes of Patrick Kearney. Kearney was a superstar here and is in the NFL. But watch right up here at the top. This pocket will collapse. And 91 makes a shoestring tackle and prevents a first down. Can the Cavaliers melt the clock and upset seventh rank Georgia Tech? Well, here's Jones. Ross Mitchell, who's having a big afternoon tackling. Trips him up after a gain of three. Well, it's reached that stage of the game where you have to make stops. And Tim, this seems like a very fast game. It's been a fabulous game, but it, look up. There's six minutes and 50 seconds to go. Georgia Tech stopped him the last time. They've got to do it again. Second down and each seven. Jones with a hold. Jones with a move. Jones to the 48. Well, Papa's pretty proud of the young one there. Hard to keep up with the Joneses. That's right. Southern gets a great block up front, but just watch the beauty. That was the lateral acceleration. Watch this. You don't even get a hand on him. Those are good tacklers. A gain of 14, 186 yards for Thomas Jones, and he's trying to add to that. Thomas Jones inside the 40. He looks over to the kids by the Heisman side and gives them a salute. Well, he's saying, yeah, the Heisman winner might be playing on this field today, but it might be me. You know, he hasn't gotten the publicity to really be in the race, but I think everyone watching, and certainly in ACC country, knows what kind of player this cat is. Look at those numbers. Tyree Foreman comes in at tailback to give Jones a break. Foreman down inside the 30. What about this conference? You know, you have Joe Hamilton, arguably the best quarterback in the country. They may argue that for Purdue, but you got him. You got Thomas Jones here, the best running back perhaps in the country. You got Peter Warwick down at Florida State. What about this conference? Number one team, number seven team, and a lot of other teams that are starting to turn the corner, and you better believe that Mr. Bowden will have a plan at Clemson pretty soon as well. Absolutely. Second down and two. Fourth. First down, Cavaliers. Well, the worst thing in the world is happening to the Georgia Tech defense. It's one thing if you allow big plays, but it's another if they just turn around and hand it off and if it's eight yards of whack. This has been a defense that's had a tough time against the run all year. Yep, they have. They have, and with the injuries racking up, it makes it even more difficult, but it's no time for excuses. They're going to have to come with some run blitzes. Well, you're right. They're going to have to gamble now. First down, Wahoo. Foreman cuts back inside the 20 to the 15. Second down and two. Foreman again. He's got the first down inside the 10. Down to the three. Great line surge by La Montaigne, Woodson, St. Clair, Routson, and Barnes. 
this is a combination of several things, but watch the push up front by that big offensive line. Man on man, they just hammer you to death. They have a reputation for being very physical, and they are dominating right now. Virginia is about to slam the door. Maybe. First and goal. Foreman. Touchdown. Cavaliers go up by two touchdowns with 3.36 to play. Georgia Tech tired, gets caught inside, more good blocking, but Tim, that's just too easy. Extra point is good. The Cavaliers 45, Georgia Tech 31. Tyree Foreman scores, does Hamilton have another miracle in it? Tech needs two touchdowns. George O'Leary knows they're on the rocks. Well, they have the number one offense. They have the top quarterback. They have 336 and three timeouts. So anything can happen, but Virginia should turn this one around. David Green. This is Des White. White's loose to the 33-yard line. First down for Hamilton. Out to the 37. Virginia defensively will try to funnel everything inside to keep the clock running. 3-10 and counting. Clock still moving. They're coming with a blitz. Hamilton gets around the corner. Steps out of bounds at the 35, so all that, and they pick up two yards. You know what that was, besides the magical wonders of Joe Hamilton, was terrific play in the secondary. He was playing cat and, cat and mouse with the cornerback over here with his wide receiver, and they were on him like super glue. Watch this action right down here. Those two guys are manned up, and they give Hamilton nothing. Joe's wanting to go deep. Joe needs to go deep now. It's third down and they need eight. Good protection, good throw. First down or close to it. And he gets out of bounds. So Matt Bay with the catch. The ball is at the 44. And it should be enough for the first. Tremendous numbers. Look at the last three quarters, 467 for the pass. Out of the shotgun. Over the middle, he's got a man. And that's complete to Watkins. And Watkins is down inside the 30. The clock will stop with 227. They'll move the chains. Georgia Tech's got to get up quickly. It was a gain of 28. Hamilton to the end zone, incomplete. Thrown in the direction of Des White. 212 left in the game. You know, having said that, Tim, it almost makes you think that you could risk a draw play or some type of run here if you think you can get a first down or, or jam it in on a run because no one is expecting that. Second down and 10. Hamilton. Caught. White inside the 10 to the 7. And that's effectively what a run would do anyway. It keeps the clock going. They're trying to keep the ball in the middle of the field. They being the Cavs. Under two minutes to play. Third down and three. And Hamilton goes under center. And now calls a timeout. Wow. 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 That's a big timeout right there. Because you'd think that you could come back on a fourth down. Even if you're not at the play that you want to be in. You waste the timeout right there. 
George O'Leary not happy with the timeout. That was an interesting good guy, bad guy. Offensive coordinator Ralph Friedgen was trying to baby him, keep his confidence up, not let him get wounded psychologically here this late. Well, the style of coaching for that guy right there, Ralph Friedgen, he says, I'm a tough lot, tough coach, tough love guy. And Big play here for Hamilton. Third down, they need three. They really need more than that. They need the touchdown. Hamilton gets on the corner. Hamilton throws. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. It's Kerry Watkins. I love the play call. Absolutely love the play call. What they've got is Joe Hamilton on the corner. Nothing but a straight sprint out. He gets out here. He can throw it or run it. He waits and waits, is patient, finds his guy, zips it in. That's a good feeling right there for a quarterback. And the extra point is good. And so with 145 remaining in this ballgame, Joe Hamilton brings Georgia Tech back within seven. Luke Manger will tee it up. He's the onside guy. The Cavaliers have their sure hands team in. Has to go 10 yards before Tech can get its hands on it. And Manjay is generally, well, you saw that clip. He's the kind that likes to get it end over end and pop it up. This could be the ball game for Georgia Tech. 1.45 left. The Cavaliers lead by seven. Here it is. He got the hop he wanted, but Chris Luzar made the catch. Well, now there are two timeouts remaining. And yes, it is possible, but it's improbable. It would be a lot better for Georgia Tech, assuming its defense could hold, if there were that third timeout. Thomas Jones back in the ballgame now for Virginia. First down, Cavaliers. Here's Jones. Cuts back. Look out. Yeah. He almost broke it. Hester caught him from behind, but it's a first down for the Cavaliers, and you've got one minute and 38 seconds left. How ironic is it that the group responsible for this win today is the offense? This guy's son had a lot to do with that, but you know the offense was no point nowhere in the first quarter. And now when Georgia Tech just has to have a stand, they can't do it. Does the clock get nervous too? <laughs> Thomas Jones down inside the 35. And Georgia Tech takes a timeout. Well, 45-38 Virginia, 126 left, and right now it looks like the Cavaliers are in control, and George O'Leary knows it. Look at this. Georgia Tech's at its number 10, but Virginia is beyond it. Thomas Jones. What an afternoon Jones has had. Just has been spectacular. All right, you've seen them all, Tim. We've 38 to... carries, 212 yards for Jones. Yeah, unreal. You, you've seen them all. Where do you put him among this year's bunch? Thomas Jones? Yeah. I will say this. He's as good as any. Yeah. As good as any. Well, I think once you consider the versatility, I mean, I mean he catches balls. He has great hands. Uh, we know what he can do as a runner. We know what he can do as a leader. Uh, there are some players, uh, Ron Dane, for example, is, is a terrific player, but he doesn't catch football. You know what I He's like an inside about runner. I'll tell you, Dean, had a great visit with him Thursday. We spent the afternoon just talking, and here he is again. He's got a big hole down to the 32. But he's also... The true student athlete. Absolutely. Graduated in May with a degree in psychology. He did it three years. Most underrated, underpublicized back in the nation. Leading rusher in the ACC a year ago, the leading rusher in the nation this year. Football News All American. What else could you ask from a player? And he has 214 yards today. Joe Hamilton, 18 of 26, 233 yards, a touchdown. Thomas Jones, 39, carries officially. 213 yards, two touchdowns, and 164 of those yards were in the second half. Again, the final score, Virginia 45, seventh-ranked Georgia Tech 
38. 